When it comes to debating, unlike the scales of justice or the force, you don't want the arguments of both sides to be in perfect balance. What you really want to do is show the adjudicator that your arguments are more important. We call this weighing, and that's what we're looking at in today's Conquering Debating video. Hi everyone, welcome to another Conquering Debating video. My name's Mayella. And my name is Aleth. Now often, just proving that your argument is true is not enough. This is because you run the risk that both you and your opposition prove your arguments very well, which leaves it up to the adjudicator to decide which equally well-proven argument they care more about. That's why you have to weigh arguments and prove to the judge that even if they believe the other team, your case is still more important. Let's look at three ways that you can show that your arguments are the superior ones. The first way to weigh your arguments is by assessing the number of people impacted by the argument. It's a very utilitarian approach, but it boils down to the idea that the larger group impacted is the group we care more about. Let's say you have the topic that we should ban all violent video games. Now, negative may make the argument that game developers will lose their jobs. They could prove that this is logically true and that unemployment is harmful. But if the affirmative team manages to successfully prove that thousands of people around the world would benefit from those games being banned, then the harms on the game developers seem pretty small in comparison because the ban benefits so many more people. This is another utilitarian approach, but it looks at weighing arguments from a different perspective. Basically, a harm or benefit that is spread out across a huge number of people but has very little impact on them is usually less important than a big harm or benefit that is centralized on one person. It is a way of reversing the weighing that we just talked about before. Let's look at an example of something like subsidizing healthcare. Everyone pays more in tax and nobody likes paying tax, but it isn't a huge tax, especially when it's spread out across the whole population. And in return, those who, who need healthcare but can't afford it otherwise get the rather large benefit of having their life saved. The last type of weighing seeks to completely turn the utilitarian approach on its head by looking at which stakeholders are impacted. You're trying to argue here that because of some special characteristic or vulnerability, the impacts on one group should weigh more heavily in the judge's decision. A really good recent example of this would be mask rules. Now, masks are still mandatory in some settings, which can be frustrating and uncomfortable for a lot of people. But this is outweighed by the benefits for elderly people or people with immune system disorders, who are uniquely and particularly vulnerable to catching airborne diseases. Another way to think about this is to look at whether or not a group is owed a special obligation. Let's take the example of Indigenous Australians. Certain policies may benefit them, but come at some cost to other populations, maybe in things like having a special voice in Parliament or having the final say over mining rights on traditional lands. Even though they're a smaller group, the judge could be persuaded to weigh their decision in favour of them because of the historical mistreatment leading to a special obligation to help this group. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. We hope that you've learned some things about how to weigh arguments that you can use in your next debate. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more content. See you next time. Toodaloo.